the Chomsky hierarchy is used to classify grammars. In this video, we have a look at the different classes. The term Chomsky hierarchy is named after the American linguist Noam Chomsky. And the idea is that we start with an arbitrary grammar, which is always a structured like here, G, which consists uh, of a set of non-terminals N, an alphabet sigma, the so-called terminals, set of productions and a start symbol S, and the start symbol S is from which we start all the derivations. And the requirement we have in all the classes is that the set of non-terminals and terminals are disjoint. And now the idea of this hierarchy is to impose more and more restrictions on the form the productions can have. The most generous class is the class of Chomsky zero grammars. In this class we have hardly any restrictions on the form the productions can have. The only restriction given here looks quite complicated, so we go through it in detail. The production must have the form that we replace an alpha by a beta, such that this alpha has this, uh, is in this complicated uh, language. What it means is that at first we have an arbitrary string consisting of terminals and non-terminals, might even be empty, then there must be a non-terminal and then again we have a string consisting of terminals or non-terminals, which also can be empty. So what it actually means is that on the left-hand side of a production there must occur at least one non-terminal. This is the one in the middle here, that's the one that must occur. So it is this one here, this is the non-terminal we need to have. And on the right-hand side for the beta there's hardly any restriction, it can be any combination of non-terminals or terminals, and it can also be the empty word. Here on the right-hand side we have an example of a Chomsky zero grammar. In this grammar we have all kinds of productions. We have a production that uh, replaces a non-terminal by the empty word. We have length decreasing uh, productions. Here we have two non-terminals on the left-hand side, only one on the right-hand side. We have also productions like this here, in which the B more or less this, uh, this capital B more or less jumps over the lowercase b and uh, duplicates the, the amount of b's here. So there's a lot allowed in Chomsky zero grammars. And if you feel like it, you can try to figure out what this grammar actually does. We call a language Chomsky zero if there is a grammar that generates this language. And it turns out that this um, definition is equi uh, actually equivalent to the definition of the Turing acceptable languages. So the equivalent machine model here is the Turing machine. For every Chomsky zero grammar we can construct a Turing machine that accepts the same language and vice versa. For the second class, the so-called Chomsky one grammars, we restrict the, uh, the productions a bit further. Chomsky one grammars are also called context sensitive and the reason will be apparent soon. So the productions must have this form given here. The idea of this form is that we have a non-terminal A which is replaced by some string beta but this replacement takes place in a context and the context is the alpha 1, alpha 2 and this context stays the same. So this replacement of this uh, A actually occurs within the context of the alpha 1, alpha 2. One important uh, thing is that the beta is defined to be a string consisting of non-terminals and terminals, but it may not be the empty word. That's indicated by this plus here. So this actually leads to a problem. The uh, empty word could not be constructed using these kind of productions. So there is additionally a production uh, allowed that replaces the, the start symbol S by the empty word epsilon. But if we have this uh, production, the S may not occur on the right hand side of any pr uh, production in this case. And like for the uh, Chomsky zero uh, gr uh, grammars, we call a language Chomsky one of context sensitive if there is such a grammar that generates the language. Here on the right hand side we have an example of a Chomsky one grammar and this uh, Chomsky one grammar you can see that actually it uh, replaces the non-terminals within a context. For example here we have this uh, production that replaces the C and D by a capital C and a lowercase c. 
So what is actually replaced is this D by a lowercase c, and we keep the context c. So this actually fits the, the definition. And this is the same for, for all the other productions here. There's also an equivalent machine model, the so-called linear bounded automata. But we will not look into the details of this automaton model here. For the next class, the Chomsky two grammars or context-free grammars, we restrict the uh, allowed productions even further. The productions now have to be context-free, hence the name of the grammar, meaning that they might not have any context to the left or to the right. So we simply remove the alphas from the left and right hand side of the previous definition and we allow only pr um, uh, productions of the form in which we replace one non-terminal, A, by one string of terminals or non-terminals, beta. The example here on the right hand side is also a famous grammar. You can easily figure out what kind of language it um, generates. There's also an equivalent machine model, the so-called push-down automata. There are a lot of applications of Chomsky two grammars. In fact, all the programming languages are specified using these uh, Chomsky two grammars. To be a bit more precise, it's actually a subset of the Chomsky two grammars. But uh, the application is therefore in compiler construction, where you have the definition of the programming languages using a, a grammar, and you would like to generate a parser, for example. And there are tools around that do exactly this. Typical examples are Antelar or Yak. Finally, we arrive at the most restrictive class of grammars, the class of Chomsky three or right linear grammars. In this class, we allow only three types of productions. The first type of allowed productions replaces one non-terminal by a string of one terminal and one non-terminal. And this non-terminal has to be on the right of this string. That's why it's called right linear. In the second type of production, we replace one non-terminal by one terminal. And finally, we are allowed to replace a non-terminal by the empty word epsilon. Here on the right hand side, we have an example of a Chomsky three grammar. In this Chomsky three grammar, we replace the S by the string AS or the empty word. So using these two uh, productions, we can generate the strings that consist only of A's. These types of production actually look very much similar to the um, transitions in finite automata and actually the finite automata are the equivalent machine model. Also equivalent to the Chomsky three grammars are the regular expressions. And these are actually the most used uh, models for handling Chomsky three languages we would usually use a finite automata or regular expressions. For example, in programming languages, you would use regular expressions to uh, define a, a Chomsky three language instead of, for example, a Chomsky three grammar. So we have started with a general grammar and we have imposed more and more restrictions on the production, finally arriving at this hierarchy here. However, this is not only a hierarchy on the grammars, but also on the languages and therefore also on the equivalent models uh, of uh, automata. For example, using this hierarchy, we immediately see that for every finite automaton, which corresponds to a, con, uh, to a Chomsky three language here, we know that there must be uh, a push down automaton accepting the language and also a linear bounded automaton or a general Turing machine, all accepting the same language. However, the other way around, it's not possible. There will be languages which can be accepted by Turing machines, but not by pushdown automata, which correspond to the Chomsky two uh, languages. As we have started with the general grammar and then imposed more and more restrictions, it is clear that these uh, classes form a hierarchy. So every Chomsky three language, for example, is by definition also Chomsky two. Every Chomsky two language is also Chomsky one and so on. We obtain a similar hierarchy for the automata models. For example, we know that for every finite automaton, we can construct a Turing machine that accepts the same language or that for a regular expression, we could construct a pushdown automaton 
that uh, accepts the language that's defined by the regular expression.